you critic. Ah, but what I'm going to teach, what I'm going to dwell on is, how do we agree to disagree agreeably? How are we not going to allow minor, minor disagreement to happen to create problem for us? Why is this topic important? Allah says in Quran chapter 8, verse 46, and that is the importance of these topics. Some people say, why are they discussing this? So it's like, okay, never discuss here. Why? Kilo kawa. Bada audu billahi mina shaitani rajim. Bismillah rahmani rahim. You are in academic environment. Academic environment, you need to write the objective. Why? Why? Why is it important? Allah says, Ya you are ladina amanu. Ati Allah. Wa ati rasul. Wa la ta nazzahu. Patav salu. Wa ti abu. Wa ta si abu ri hukum. Wa zbiru. In Allah ma sabiri. Takibir. Ah, there's no time. Ah, I was given only one hour. I don't know if I'll be able to do justice to it, but I promised to drop the, to send the material to Dr. Loco. You are Latina Amanu, those who claim to believe, those who believe. Ati Allah, obey Allah. Ati Rasula, obey the messenger. Walata Nasa'u, don't fall into disputes among yourself. Don't go into a necessary argument. Unnecessary disagreement. If you do, what will happen? Patav salu, you will lose art. You will lose art. You will be sad. You will be sad. How many of you have argued with somebody? At the end of the day, you realize that you are wrong. How will you feel? Sad. If you are arguing with somebody and you think you are right, if you are, if eventually, if you are eventually right, you will feel I. If you are eventually wrong, how will you feel? You feel bad. And if you continue to argue, I don't see anybody who you argue with, and you continue to beat him in an argument that will come to discuss with you again. Nobody wants his ego to be deflated. When you argue with the Lord, you'll be winning the argument, you'll be losing friendship. No, we are not saying that Islam abuses argument. You. Islam recognizes and recommends and appraises it. And they want Jesus to question. To do what? Question. Even the angels ask. Quran chapter 2, verse 31. When Allah wanted to create Adam, he told the angel, I want to create a woman being. They said, Quran chapter 2, he said, Why do you want to create him? We we'll worship you. These people will be sending blood. Islam is not a dogmatic religion. What we have is smart trust, not blind faith. Smart trust is different from blind faith. faith. The trust you have in your doctor is a smart trust because they have tested him, they are certified him to be okay. Angel says, are you, you are going to create, why, is Allah cons why was Allah consulting? He was just teaching us to do consultation whenever we want to do anything. That is the essence. Who are the angels for you there to be consulted by Allah? Who are they? <laughs> Who are they? <laughs> Baba, tell them angel in there. Why must he tell them? But he's telling you that whatever you want to do with your child, you must consult. Allah, Allah. Jeffrey Lang wrote a book. He called it The Angel Asks. Ibrahim asks. Alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah, how will you resuscitate the dead after you have, they, have, they have died? Miriam asked, when he was told he's going to get, get, get a child, he said, I know what I do. How will I have a child when I've not been touched by any man? Musa asked, Musa says, Allah, I want to see you. How can I see you? What I'm saying is Islam encourages questioning. Islam encourages interrogation. Islam encourages finding out how things happen. But there are limitations. If you argue unnecessarily, you are going to lose art. You will lose your courage. You will lose your power. Your enemies will have power over you because you are doing ear splitting exercise. That is the implication. If you continue to argue unnecessarily, more, I want you to go away with something here. If you have arguments in Islam, they are not about the three aspects, three fundamental aspects of every Muslim's life. We have three fundamental aspects of our life. Number one, Ibadah. 
All scholars agree on the issues of Ibadah. How many salats in a day? Five. When do you fast in Ramadan? Next month. When do you go on Ash? How do you do Saka? All those things. Stealing is bad. Goodness to parents is good. Taking alcohol is bad. Pork is bad. Anything about Ibadah, the scholars agree on them in total. You won't see anybody who will observe his salat to Zuri in the morning. He needs to go to Arrow. But somebody to say, in the Safar, month of Safar, what are you doing? I'm fasting Ramadan. Ah. On the issue of Ibadah, all scholars agree. On the issue of Akida, six articles of faith. Believe in Allah, believe in angel, day of judgment, all the rest of them. Uh, resurrection, every Muslim must believe in it and all scholars agree on there could be questions which is allowed. It's, when Allah says in al you are going to be drinking cheese, juice, cheese, you are going to be taking honey, you are going to be taking milk, you are going to be taking this. Just to equate it with what our knowledge can comprehend, our intellect can comprehend. What is the heaven is more than cheese. It's more than honey. It's more than milk. When I was lecturing a few days ago, I told somebody, if you, if you had to be doing good because of honey, what will you say? Or because of cheese. So that when you get out of the general, you will eat cheese. Only me in the cheese, like you not tell you. I don't like cheese. <laughs> it's not about cheese. It's not about honey. It's not about milk. But what our knowledge, what our intellect can comprehend. The ancients ask Allah. They said, did you create something that's bigger than your throne? He said, yes. They asked him, what was that? He said, intellect. They said, how big is intellect? He said, your intellect cannot understand it. Allah Akbar. <laughs> Allah <Engineer>. Akbar. <laughs> how big is intellect? Your intellect <laughs> cannot understand how big is <laughs> intellect. He said, can you count the number of sand? He uh -huh. said, no, you can't understand intellect. <laughs> On this world of Akida, articles of faith, all scholars agree. There could be questions here and there. There are some that scholars will say, why are you troubling yourself? Is Jesus coming back? What is your business? The scholar says, if he comes back, welcome. <laughs> but what do, I, what do I lose? <laughs> you don't have to. There are things you don't have. Uh -huh. On the issue of Mamalat, some fundamental social affairs, they agree on it, inheritance, how it should be shared, either period. They agree on it, but they, are, they differ on some minor, minor issues. And I will tell you why they differ and why they will continue to differ. Till eternity, we are going to differ. As long as they differ, no, for, none of them will claim to be invaluable. None of them will claim not to make mistakes. They will say, this is the way I understand it because this is my level of knowledge. Imam Safi will say, I feel I, may be, I'm, I feel I'm wrong as long as I feel that I'm right. I may be wrong, you may be right. I may be right, you may be wrong. After, after every argument, Safi will say that. He say, I may be wrong, you, and you may be right. I may be right, you, you may be wrong. May Allah let me see the truth through you. Um, That's what he will say. But for you to say, I'm right, how can you say you are right? Why do scholars differ? I've chosen to take this topic because of our academic environment that we find ourselves. I won't mention the universities in Lagos now, in Lagos State. It's in Lagos. That university is locked up after every obligatory prayer because of argument. Because of argument, unnecessary issues. That's why it is compulsory to teach our students the ethics of disagreement in Islam. You don't argue unnecessarily. Allah, our Creator, says, "Wala usa arubuka la jala kum umatangwa idatam wala yaktaluna muktalifi." Quran chapter eleven verse one. If I had ways, I would have made you one, but you not cease to disagree. Some scholars be quoting an hadith that says, "Alik tilaw be na umati rama." Disagreement among my woman is a blessing. That is not what the prophet meant. You. What he meant is that there should be so many opinions on issue. You won't say, ah, Islamic finance, ENSIA. Islamic engineering, ENSIA. There should be room for more researches. 
That's why Islamic finance, Abu Hanifa was, was the, the hero there. And that's what the prophet is saying that when my, when my Uma, when they explore so many opportunities, it's a blessing to me. Why do scholars differ? Why do scholars differ? And why they, are they going to continue to differ? So that when you are arguing the most, or your most are at home on, on campus here, you know that there will be bound to be disagreement. Why? Number one, Quran and Sunnah are silent on some issues. They are not mentioned. They are not mentioned. E.g., organ transplants. Someone come and show me in the Quran where you have organ transplant. Blood transfusion. Salat inside aeroplane. 